Hi, I'm Sarah Takis, and this is my story. Art has always been a really important part of my life for as long as I can remember. I probably was two years old doing jello shaped like shamrocks with my mom. I remember her putting like whipped cream and M&Ms on top and we would watch Sesame Street and I would like dance around and then like color in a coloring book and do different craft kits. Once I got to school, I think that the kids thought that it was kind of cool that I was an artsy girl and they, are, they were always asking me to like maybe draw something for them because all they were doing was little stick figures and I'm like, oh wow, like my stick figure has hair and all this. <laughs> I think that it was cool for a little while, but as I grew up, less people were interested in art. We all had fun in art class, but it didn't seem like it was a passion for many other people and those who did share that passion didn't really talk about it and we didn't like draw together or do crafts together. I'd say around middle school I started to notice that I had so many differences from other people in my class and there were times when I felt like I couldn't talk about what I was really interested in and that my voice was stifled. As a middle schooler, I'm just like, no, I want to be a kid still, and I wasn't ready for all that. I just felt like I was off in my own little world and in school sometimes. I felt like I had to try and find other ways to connect with people, but those weren't really the things that I was really interested in. I tried to connect with other people by joining activities. So I was in sports. I played soccer, softball, basketball. I was in Girl Scouts. But I still felt like while I was in those places, I didn't have a voice to speak up and really tell them who I was because I was just being like them at that point and hiding the things that I was really, really passionate about. Also in junior high, I did deal with people kind of bullying me. They saw me as someone different in many ways. They picked on my weight. Um, they picked on me not being into boys at that time. So they would joke around and they, they thought it was a joke. They would have certain phrases that they would say like behind my back even though I wouldn't know about it. I got so ganged up on that people who were my friends started hanging out with other people and drifting away from me and I just felt like I couldn't even trust anyone at that point. So going into high school, I kind of went in with that mindset. I wanted to be seen as myself again and find people who would like me for me and you know, people that I could trust. I got on student council when I was in high school right away and I was secretary of the freshman class. It was a very small school, but I still thought that was cool, something that I had accomplished and people voted me in. I wasn't bullied or anything in high school, like I had friends, but at the same time when I would hang out with them, they all would have the same interests and then I would feel like the third wheel or the fifth wheel and I never felt like I completely connected with a group of people. I always felt like I was someone who was better with a one-on-one -on -one relationship and I hadn't really met that person in high school as a friend. The girl who I was really close friends with went to a different high school and that was pretty devastating at first because we were so close and we grew up together a street away from each other and we were like basically sisters. So that was kind of a struggle for me to find someone in high school who I could do everything with. And eventually there was a girl on my soccer team who 
became a really, really close friend to me. So I feel like with her, I definitely was able to feel better about myself and realize that I was important to someone. I still wasn't able to open up to an entire group of people and have them share in my artistic passion, I guess. Everyone thought what I did was cool, but they never really got the chance to know me. Once high school was coming to an end, I wanted to find more ways to get my voice out to other people, to the world, and find a community or find someone who would let me speak. Probably towards the end of high school, like I was saying, and like into college, I would find different message boards of things that I was interested in. A lot of them were TV shows, old sitcoms, like Who's the Boss, um, American Idol, I was a very big fan of even though I can't sing well. I like when other people are showcasing what they can do really well. That makes me happy and music is um, something that really relaxes me and it's something that makes me feel like I'm in a different world when I'm drawing and have music on. So I'd find these message boards and I would go on them and talk to people about the show but then there would be a general message part where we could talk about anything. So we could talk about our favorite foods, our favorite animals, what hobbies or passions that we had in life. and people were listening and people were actually directly responding to me at that point and I finally felt like I was starting to find people who were interested in hearing what I had to say and who were respectful of me. I had done some random vlogs with my friends in high school, but nothing really came out of them. It was just for fun and they weren't very structured or anything like that. But after making a couple fan videos for American Idol on my first YouTube channel, I started putting myself out there and actually talking to the camera and talking to the people who are out there behind the camera and the computer screens. I actually got a pretty positive response from people on my videos. A few people would come on and leave comments and likes and they would request me to do more things like show my crafts for instance. When I showed them my Starburst wrapper dress, people were actually really excited about it and they're like, wow, you know, that's so cool. Can you tell us how you did that? Can you tell us a little bit more about other things that you like to make and show us what other crafts you have in your room? And that was really exciting for me and it was kind of a way to make me feel even more validated as a person and as an artist. So I ended up creating an entire craft channel and I still have that to this day. It's called So Craftastic and I post a ton of different DIYs and arts and crafts projects, but I also put myself into my videos and I try and include my personality, my quirks, my failed attempts at creating something and I feel like I can relate to people and have friends that come and watch me, but also I interact with them and I reply to their comments. It's just a really happy place. I feel like I don't know where I would be if I hadn't started making videos. So now I do feel like I am a lot more confident when I speak on camera. When I first started, I kind of went back to that mindset from when I was younger and when I felt like people were singling me out. but. Over the years, I was able to realize that, hey, you know, it doesn't matter if you're being awkward on camera right now or anything like that. And there's people who have told me how much me showing my passion and my true self and not holding back has helped them overcome struggles in life. And that is something that's really exciting for me. and. It makes my heart really happy that I'm impacting people in a positive way and also I'm on a road to becoming happier and happier every day as a person. 
now I feel like I have a voice and I get to do something that makes me really, really happy every single day. And that's my story.